so now we're going to look at if the eigenvalues are the same. And this will conclude uh, my treatment on chapter 3 in the book. I think the last section has to do with like a, a brief glimpse into uh, nonlinear OD, um, but that's chapter 7. So I'll get to that at the very end. Um, and it's not really like a big thing in this course anyway, so I think I'll probably only do the first two sections of chapter 7 at the very end. Because um, that's what most uh, professors at Tech do anyway. But regardless, let's finish this out, and then I'll let you know where we go from there. Great, so now we're in the last case of what if lambda 1 is equal to lambda 2? You might be asking, okay, do we only have one eigenvector? And if so, then how do we sketch, sketch the face portrait? Well, glad you asked. Um, we have two cases for repeated eigenvalues. Case 1 is the easy case, and that's why I've written it out up here. And don't, I'm not going to bother doing an example just because they're all essentially the same. Um, it's easy because a like you're going to have your uh, eigenvalues on the diagonal, so it'll be a is equal to lambda zero zero lambda, and then lambda is your eigenvalue. So both of your eigenvalues are going to equal lambda because it's going to be whatever that number is. Say, is it, say it's five zero zero five. Then the characteristic equation is five minus lambda squared has to equal zero. Therefore, the eigenvalue is five. Uh, repeated. And so once you do a minus lambda i, you'll get the zero matrix. So you'll get this. And so what this tells you is, okay, you need to find two eigenvectors that are linearly independent to each other and that also satisfy that when you multiply them onto here, um, you get uh, the zero vector, right? Well, two really easy ones are right here, just e1 and e2. And so therefore, your final solution can just be written like this, and you're done. So that's good. Um, and here I've drawn them out for you. Uh, however, I don't know any professor that would make you draw this, just because it's very straightforward. If your lambda is greater than zero, it makes sense that you're going to have unstable node, right? So what happens is they just all spawn from the origin. This is a very clear source. And so all the arrows point out in every single direction. And then if lambda is less than zero, then you have an asymptotically stable origin. So all the arrows point towards the origin. And that's it. That's all you need to know for this case. Now, what's tricky is the other case, which is essentially the eigenvalues aren't on the diagonal. So what do you do? You find your singular eigenvalue lambda. You solve for your one eigenvector. So that answers your question. You only have one eigenvector, unfortunately. But you can find another a linearly independent solution by trying to find w, which is another vector, by setting up a minus lambda i times w will give you v, which is your original eigenvector. And therefore, your general solution is given as x of t is equal to c1 e lambda t times v plus c2 e lambda t times tv plus w. Now, notice this tv. This should kind of remind you of, remember when we had redundancy and method of undetermined coefficients? We multiplied by t to get rid of that redundancy, right? Same kind of deal here. We have the redundancy with this first part of our solution. Therefore, to get rid of it, we multiply it by t, and we add this little extra w so that uh, it makes sense as part of our treatment of like vectors and uh, 2D systems. So let's do an example. All right. So it's always given to you like this. You have your A matrix, and you want to do something with it. So first things first, determine of A minus lambda i, right? So term A minus, it's a really bad minus, minus lambda I is equal to minus 3 halves minus lambda 1 minus 1 fourth minus 1 half minus lambda. This is minus 3 halves minus lambda times minus 1 half minus lambda plus 1 fourth is equal to 0. If you uh, fold this out and simplify it, you'll get lambda squared plus 2 lambda plus 1 is equal to 0. This is exactly lambda plus 1 squared is equal to 0. Therefore, lambda is equal to minus 1 multiplicity 2. And I like to say multiplicity instead of repeating, and we'll get more into that once we get to chapter 6. So for now, that's just how I write it. Feel free to write lambda is equal to minus 1 minus 1. Um, it means the same thing. So now we want to do what we always do, a 
minus lambda i, which in this case will be plus i, times our only eigenvector v should give us zero, right? So up here, we want to add i to the first and fourth components, so that'll give us minus one half, one, minus one fourth, then adding a one here will give us a one half, right? Then you can row reduce this to one of the rows being zero. I'm going to multiply the top row by two so that I get minus one and two. Therefore, we have minus little v1 plus two little v2 is equal to zero, which means our only eigenvector can be written as, let's see, let's make this two and one, right? That checks out because minus two plus two times one is zero. So that is our only eigenvector. Good. And now we need to find that little w vector, right? Okay, so that's set up as a minus lambda i, so that's a plus i, because our lambda was negative 1, times w must equivalently equal v. Okay, a plus i was minus 1 half, 1 minus 1 fourth, 1 half, times w, which I'll write as w1, w2, has to equal what we got for our eigen vector, which was 2, 1. Now, in this case, and here I'll write this in red so you don't forget, don't row reduce here, because we're not solving something that's homogeneous anymore. We don't have 0 on uh, on the right-hand side anymore. So if you row reduce it, you might not get the right answer. So simply just don't row reduce, and just see what happens here from this point forward. So if we ask ourselves what happens here, this means minus 1 half w1 plus w2 has to equal 2, or minus 1 fourth w1 plus 1 half w2 has to equal 1. If you multiply the bottom equation by 2, you get the exact same equation out on top, so you only have to deal with one of them, and I'll deal with this one here. So just ask yourself, what kind of w vector satisfies this? And the answer is, hmm, anything that satisfies this equation will work. So I'm going to pick the easiest one, which is, to me, 0, 2. Very easily, you could have also picked, uh, what is it, minus 4? Yeah, minus 4, 0. That's also fine. But to me, this is easy. So I chose this one. Then let's keep going down. We ran out of some space, but that's fine, because now we can just write the general solution. So general solution as given, we can write it as x of t is equal to c1 e to the lambda t, which was minus 1 times t, times v, which was 2, 1, plus c2, e minus t, and then times tv, so a t onto this 2, 1, plus our w vector, which was 0, 2. And that's our final general solution. That's it. That's all there is to it. Great. Now, what about face portraits? Okay. Let me just put that right there. Cool. So the steps for this one are a little bit different. You just draw the eigenvector line. Don't draw the w line. Um, so in our last uh, example, just draw the 2, 1 line at first. And then you test 1, 0, and 0, 1, the e1 and e2 vectors, for the direction of the swirl. And by the swirl, I mean, look at these four examples that I have right here. And they all kind of like swirl like this, right? They either swirl towards the origin or swirl away from the origin. And you're guaranteed to always land into one of these four cases. And I've separated them out, so you'll know it's either one of these two if lambda is greater than zero, or one of these two if lambda is less than zero. So they either go towards the origin or they go away from the origin. So same kind of thing that we've been dealing with before. So. Let's do it for the previous example. So remember, our general solution for here was x of t is equal to c1 e minus t times 2, 1, plus c2 e minus t times t, 2, 1, plus, what was it, 0, 2 was our w vector. Okay, so that means this is our eigenvector. And so this is the line that we have to draw. So our face portrait here, we draw 2, 1. So that's over 2, up 1. They meet right here, go through the origin like that. Yeah, there we go. And then 
put the trajectory on here. I should have mentioned that up there, but hopefully you're used to this now that you can just tell. When you draw the eigenvector line, always put the trajectory. So this one is a minus, so that means it's going towards the origin. So from up here, we're guaranteed to be in either this case or this case. So the top right one or the bottom right one. Okay. So how do we test for the swirl? How do we test if it swirls from up top, from the top right down to the origin, and then from the bottom right to the origin, or from the uh, top left to the origin and bottom right to the origin? Let's just think about what we did last section, right? We tested the eigenvectors. So let's do that here. So a times 1, 0. In this case, it'll give me, and at this point, hopefully you just know, it gives you the first column, right? It's minus 3 halves, minus 1 fourth. And then a, 0, 1, will give you the second column. So that's 1 minus 1 half. So at 1, 0, which is right here, let me use my other colors as well. So that's red. And this is blue. So for my red, at 1, 0, it's going to go to the left, min uh, 1.5, and down, minus 1 fourth. So that looks kind of like something like this. Right? And for my blue, it goes to the right one and down a half. So that's right here, to the right one, down one half. It's like this. And so from here, what happens? Well, they have to go towards the origin. That's the first thing. So let's deal with the red one first. If it goes towards the origin, it hasn't, it can't do anything else but do that, right? Which means that the swirl has to come in from here. If we were to draw this back out. And they get closer and closer to the origin like that. Now, if we deal with the blue one, same kind of deal. This has to go to the origin like this. So if we draw this out, it has to look like that. And that's it. That's the face portrait for this. So just test for the swirl with your testing vectors of 1, 0, 0, 1. And draw the trajectory on the eigenvector line, and you should be good to go. All right, great. So as I stated earlier, I'm going to skip 3.6 because I'm going to do chapter 7 at the end. Uh, and then where we go from here is chapter... Uh, six, which builds on this chapter. The way that the Brennan book likes to deal with it is chapter three is just two by two systems. And so I've dealt with all the cases that we have for two by two. Naturally, we can now go to n by n. So we'll be solving matrices that are either three by three, four by four, et cetera, et cetera. Um, there's the notion of an exponential of a matrix and fundamental matrices and solutions and things like that that we'll cover. Um, and just as a warning, I think I'll skip maybe like the first one or two sections of chapter six, just because it's a review of what, if you've gone through these chapter three videos, you should be fine. Um, and so I'll deal with the material that is unique to n by n systems. And I'll touch on some of the material that overlaps just because it's a little bit more delicate at the higher order. Um, but then after that, we're done with systems. And so from there, I plan to go into Laplace which will be chapter 5, and then at the very end of that I'll go into a little bit of chapter 7, and then that'll be it. That's Math 2552. So uh, stay tuned for that.